again, folks. Once again, this is Mark Maritato, military historical artist. Thank you for joining me once again for another time-lapse video showing me working on this painting of the Battle of Fort Wagner. The painting is a depiction of Colonel Haldimand S. Putnam of the 7th New Hampshire Infantry acting as a brigade commander and leading the second assault into the Battle of Fort Wagner on July 18, 1863. If you're interested in learning any more about this particular battle, I will leave a link to a Wikipedia article as well as a link to the first video of this series so you can learn a little bit more about what inspired this painting and uh, why it was commissioned. And again, folks, if you like this content, please consider giving the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and also hitting that notification button so that you can be informed of new content when it comes out. This will go a long way in helping us to bring more of this type of content to you. And also, if you have any questions about the painting or about my work, please feel free to drop a question in the comments section and I will be happy to answer it for you. Thank you. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm beginning to work in detail and more color. I'm working up color and values to create detail, starting with the background elements first and then working my way forward. As I had mentioned in an earlier video, you want to start with the background elements first and then work your way forward to the foreground elements in order to create a credible scene that lives within the space you're trying to create. The technical terminology for this phase of the painting is called the block-in. And um, again, I'm not too concerned with a lot of detail yet. I'm just laying in blocks of color and forms and shapes that will be built up to form the final scene and detail that you will see within the painting. So this flag that, that I'm working on now uh, you notice that I worked on it previously in an earlier uh, video and when the painting dries uh, the oil, ta oil colors have a tendency to kind of uh, lighten up and fade out when they dry out 
So when you work on them again, you have to kind of go over the spots that you worked on before to try to build that color up again. So that's what's happening here. I'm starting to lay in more color, different colors, and building up certain forms and shapes in order to create the figures that are in this smoky, distant uh, rampart that the Confederates are occupying and shooting back at the Union troops that are making their way or trying to make their way up the parapet. So here you're going to start seeing me add other colors besides blues and whites. Uh, these are going to be oranges, browns, yellows, reds that are going to be added to the sky and in other parts of the scene uh, which are going to be reflective of musketry flashes and flashes of cannons and explosions going off within the scene that are off camera if you will. As the painting gets closer to being finished, you'll see how these colors begin to work together in order to create the scene and tell the story that I am attempting to tell. Throughout the painting, you're going to see me move back and forth from working with smaller details and then uh, widening back out and working on uh, larger areas of color. Um, again, what I'm trying to do as I go along is to try to get an overall picture of what this painting might look like towards the end as I go along. So you're going to see me move from small areas that I'm working on to larger areas and um, what I'm trying to do is basically bring the entire painting up to a certain level with each time I work with it so that as it gets closer to being finished it looks closer as close to finished as possible while I'm trying to finish it if that makes sense uh, so that I could step back and kind of look at it as it's being developed and know what areas need more or less uh, attention. I should also mention uh, the reason why you're not seeing me reload my brush is on this particular video I kind of goofed up on the angle of where I set the camera up so um, unfortunately with this video when you're when you see me go and reload my brush uh, there was a lot of video of, of my big head right in front of the camera so I edited a lot of that out or I edited most of that out so that you're not seeing my, my big head right in front of the camera as we go along. But uh, in the future videos, I'm gonna make sure I correct that and kind of fix the angle so I'm not right in front. Uh, apologies for that, but it just was what it was at this point. Alright 
folks. At this point, I'm going to let the rest of the video play out with minimal comment. Again, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask in the comments section and I will be happy to answer them. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you.
So at this point, what you're seeing me do here is just work in more and more blocks and shapes of color. I'm not concerned at this point with any kind of detail. I'm just putting in colors in places where I think certain colors should be that will form kind of an underlayer that I'm going to come back later on and build more color on top of. This is just basically the foundation of the house, if you can think of it that way. A house has to sit on a foundation and the foundation needs to be strong enough to support the house. So, you know, in the initial block in of a painting, you're, you're basically putting down that foundation that the rest of the building is going to be sitting on. Okay folks, we've come to the end of this painting session. I will throw up a photo of what the painting looks like in its current form. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.